thoughts around salmon. Started if you want to start it. Start it. Oh, good. Excellent. Uh, how many of you have heard about a breatharium? You know what's a breatharium? No. You want to? Oh, yes. So, uh, you, you mentioned anything already? No, no. Okay. Just that. Okay. okay. So, I met Alitum on the 25th of September, I think, last year. And then on the 27th, I dropped him to Lonava and I had a long one on one. I was just sitting on his head, I guess, with too many questions. <laughs> and uh, I was deeply inspired. Uh, and being inspired, I was already on the path, doing a lot of energy practices, meditating a lot. So I committed myself to this. And uh, I have been living on prana to a great extent uh, the last five odd months. And he also saw me only yesterday at the airport and he was very happy to see the transformation. How many of you felt I've lost a lot of weight? Who ever has seen me before? <laughs> so, I, yeah, so besides all these uh, energetic benefits and a peaceful mind, what appears is the weight. So I must have lost upwards of uh, 14 kgs, yeah, 14 kgs, 14, 15 kgs in the last four months. So I've been largely living on prana as he will, he will explain what the concept uh, means. I mean, there's nothing for me to talk when the man is himself here. So, and uh, some of them require me to translate, so I'll be translating excellent. for them. Uh, as and when you let me speak a little bit. All right, good. That'll be excellent. And yeah. she was just going to read some things sure. for me on the definition. Sure. So that'll be good. We work as a team. Yes. <laughs> yes. So are we live? So, so it's the same way I met him just four months ago at a retreat. And uh, I mean, it was awesome. But first you feel, uh, how can one be only on bread? I mean, we are so used to eating and drinking and all those things, but you can actually do it. I'm like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, from vegetarianism, I turned to veganism, and then raw veganism, and then I meet him. So, uh, I'm almost there. Like, from morning, I've had nothing, and I don't feel like it. It's like, when you're with an energy like this, it gets transcended. <laughs> so that's the way it is. And today we had uh, an amazing talk at Vedri at a friend's uh, place in Worli. And uh, we had about 30, 40 such people. And it was awesome the way they accepted it and did a little bit of Qigong with him, which even you would do. So let's get on. All right. So how everybody doing? Good. Feeling good. That's what it's all about. Because life is good. But to get back into that mindset to recognize it is actually the pranic journey. Now when you deal with breatharian or the living on prana, when a person first hears it for the first time, it can be, wait a minute, because I did the same thing. One time this young woman said to me, there's people who live without food. And I said, what? But immediately, I went to go look up the information as much as I could. And it really didn't shock me, because at that time, I was living a holistic lifestyle. You need to translate on this one? Uh, no, I will, I will share the crux later. You can uh, you. <laughs> good. Because at this time, when I heard about food freedom, before then, I was uh, once upon a time overweight, eating a standard American diet, blood pressure was high, and I changed my lifestyle to beat all of that while I was now at a normal weight. I was fasting once a week in my lifestyle. I was about 80% live and raw foods, and I learned about meditation and energy work. So when I heard about food freedom, I said, let me see what this is about. 
Now, living on prana comes from an ancient word that means anidia. And that means to eat very little or none at all. Now, living on prana is actually a sacred journey. It's a sacred initiation. Now, as I use this word, let's go in and see what sacred means. Now, read really sacred. Yeah, sacred is religious, secular, not connected with spiritual matter. Now, it's, they say it's not connected dealing with the secular thought process, with spiritual matters. Connected with God. But it's connected with God. Or a God dedicated to a religious purpose. Or a God connected to a religious purpose. Now the reason why I'm bringing this up, because when we bring up the word sacred, it automatically goes with some form of religion in a person's thought process. But a secular person of the world says they don't have nothing to do with spiritual matters, so they're not sacred. Okay, I just trust it. <laughs> <laughs> so, they told me that they were on their standard American diet, which we also eat the same kind of food. And after that, they gradually became vegan, meaning that they were from the animal products. Then, they started to do one or two fasting in a week. और इस प्रकार से जर्नी शुरू हुई और ये जो पूरा प्रोसेस है सेक्रेट वर्ड का डेफिनेशन दिया तो मतलब कि ये सेक्युलर प्रोसेस है ऐसा कि इसका कोई धर्म या जाति या संप्रदाय के साथ कुछ जुड़ा हुआ है ऐसा नहीं है। But now the age we are now today, knowledge has increased. Now we can look at the person who says they're secular, and they say I'm not religious. But a secular person is saying again that they're not connected with spiritual matters. But the word spirituality, we can change it now and use the word energy. Everybody's connected with energy matters. So you can't say you ain't connected to it. Because nature works in the whole. The unity of consciousness. That's what religion's been telling us. But somebody came along and tried to make another group of people saying that we're not religious. We're not connected with spiritual matter. But you are connected with spiritual matters. You're connected with the whole, and there's nobody to separate. That's the illusion. Sometimes we say that I'm not spiritual. I'm not connected with the spiritual. But every person is a spiritual. तो अगर हर व्यक्ति आत्मा है तो हर व्यक्ति अध्यात्मा में है एवरीबडी इज अ स्पिरिट सो बाय डेफिनेशन एवरीबडी इज स्पिरिचुअल तो हम सब जुड़े हुए हैं क्योंकि ईच ऑफ अस इज अ स्पिरिट दैट्स व्हाई वी कैन बोल्डली से एज आई टीच द ब्रदरियन साइंसेस एवरीबॉडी इज अ ब्रदरियन एट डिफरेंट डिग्रीज बिकॉज़ और हर कोई जो है वो प्राणों पे जीता है अभी वो अपनी प्राणवायु पे जीते हैं हम ब्रेथेरियन कहते हैं क्योंकि वो खाते नहीं है पर उनका कहने का आशय यह है कि आप भी ब्रेथेरियन हो क्योंकि आप भी तो कुछ क्षण ही खाते हो ना पूरे दिन में बाकी के समय आप नहीं खाते तो उनमें और आप में मात्र मात्राओं का फर्क है इट इज ओनली क्वेश्चन ऑफ डिग्री इट इज नॉट दैट यू आर नॉट अ ब्रेथेरियन इवन यू आर अथेरियन यू जस्ट है टू इनक्रीज द डिग्री दैट्रीज द डिग्री बिकॉज द थ्री ट्रेजर लाइफ Food, water, and breath. Breath is number one because you would die quicker without breathing than you will without food or water. So therefore, everybody's working with this force, but it's on different levels and degrees. So there's a work that has to be done with the person to increase or transform the degree that they're working with the breath. So, three, uh, um, they told us that there are three treasures. So, one is that breath, the other is that food, and the third is that water. That means, your swasan kriya, anna and water. And with these three, we work with normal. Now, with the urja, when we work with the urja, we work with the food and water requirements. 
So going back to the secular person of the world who says they're not religious and they're not connected with spiritual matters, that's an illusionary lie. <laughs> so let's go back to reading consecrated. Connected with sacred. God. Sacred. Let's well, start on this one right here. Okay. Connected with God or a God dedicated to a religious purpose and so deserving veneration. So sacredness, the reason why I say this is a sacred journey, I was living a life just like everybody else, eating a three meals a day, but I was not sustained by prana because I did not live my life in a sacred manner. Sacredness is when you start dedicating something. It becomes number one. It deserves respect. This is the temple. So this temple, I had to start honoring it at a higher level, a higher de degree to increase the energy flow. तीन दफे वो जब दिन में खाते थे उसको वो सेक्रेड सेक्रेड मतलब धार्मिक पवित्र पवित्र नहीं कह सकते तो कब कब ये पूरा प्रोसेस पवित्र होता है जब हमारे शरीर को हम मंदिर के जैसे हम उसको संभालें दैट इज व्हाट मेक्स इट सेक्रेड सो एस वी गो बैक इनटू दिस नाउ रीड दिस वर्ड्स राइट हियर नोस फोर वर्ड्स दिस इज जस्ट अ डेफिनेशन ऑफ सेक्रेड लिसन होली Blessed, blessed, consecrated, consecrated, and dedicated. And dedicated. Now, holy is the word we use for holistic, holistic medicine. You deal with herbs. You start dealing with uh, more lighter raw foods. You're becoming whole. You're working with the energy flow, the kundalini, balancing things out. That's how you start making your lifestyle. Sacred, so that the health can improve. This is how we know. Now they use the word called consecrate. The human being living in this realm is under universal laws. They seem invisible. That's why it's easy to violate. But the body, it don't care what you want to do. It's already hooked up to the matrix, and it don't lie. Every time the sun come out, the pineal gland, your third eye, gives off a hormone called serotonin. It didn't ask our permission. Should I do it today? <laughs> When that night comes, it gives off a hormone called melatonin. It's hooked up with the external clock. It don't lie. It's going to keep the law, no matter what. So it's already consecrated. शरीर जो है वो भिन्न रूप से स्वयं नहीं रहता है वो एक इस पर्यावरण के भीतर है इट इज अ पार्ट ऑफ द एनवायरमेंट तो उसको वो मैट्रिक्स कह रहे हैं कि यू ऑलवेज हुक्ड अप टू द मैट्रिक्स पर्यावरण के साथ आप जुड़े हुए हैं सूर्य जब आता है पहली किरण के साथ हमारी तीसरी नेत्र से सेरोटोनिन नाम का एक पदार्थ सेक्रीट होता है वैसे ही जब सूर्यास्त होता है उस समय मेलोटोनिन नाम का पदार्थ सेक्रीट होता है तो हमारा शरीर और आसपास का एनवायरनमेंट वो दोनों जुड़े हुए हैं और दोनों का एक दूसरे पर असर है सो वो स्टार्ट मी ऑन द जर्नी वाज हेल्थ हेल्थ इज एवरीबॉडीज फाउंडेशन आई हैड टू रियलाइज आई डोंट फील गुड नाउ चेसिंग थिंग्स इन द वर्ल्ड विद द सेकुलर माइंड दैट आई वाज गिवन आई थॉट जस्ट बिकॉज़ आई गॉट द हाउस आई हैव अचीव प्रॉस्पेरिटी I have arrived, but how can I enjoy the house when I don't feel good? The car, chasing money. All right, I'm chasing these things to give me an identity, a prosperity. But I lost the center, and it was showing in the way I felt. So, बाहरी पदार्थ सारे थे जीवन में, बाहरी संपत्ति थी वगैरह पर अगर जो उसका भुगतान कर रहा है तो वन इज एंजॉइंग अगर वो स्वयं ही ठीक नहीं है और स्वयं ही स्थित नहीं है अपने अंदर तो उस समृद्धि का क्या मतलब है सो द फर्स्ट स्टेप टू माय प्लैनेट जर्नी वाज 
I had to dedicate more time to myself and leave everything else alone. I had to drop, slow down my life. That's the start of the journey. All of that being busy, running here and there, putting other people first. That's good, but it ain't good when you ain't taking care of yourself. You understand? So I had to rededicate the energies back to myself so that I could heal. पहला जो चरण था उनका वो पहले हमारी सारी ऊर्जाएं बाहर की ओर ज्यादातर जाती है लोगों में संसार में संबंधों में जिम्मेदारियों में तो उनका पहला चरण ये था कि अगर ये प्राणिक जर्नी में रहना है तो सारी ऊर्जाएं पहले भीतर लेनी होगी बाहर जो खर्च कर रहे हैं बेवजह जो व्यय कर रहे हैं उसे बंद करके उन्होंने स्लो डाउन किया सारी ऊर्जाएं अपने भीतर ली <laughs> but I got so dedicated, I had to say, if the money I make from the hours that I work cannot afford what I need, I don't need it. So it got to the point when it was time to work overtime, they knew not to even call my name. <laughs> right, I'm not doing it. Right. So I put a rededication back on giving myself priority over things that was external. Admit it. Now, let's go into sacred again. Sacred is holy, devoted to a religious ceremony. Re wait, holy is devoted to a religious ceremony. Now, let's look at that word religious again. There's a Latin word that it comes from, and it's called regulare. Yeah. And regulare, guess what it means? Union. That sounds familiar, don't it? I'm in the land of India. Yoga means union. Same thing. So you're getting unified with something. And that what we was talking earlier, there's a consciousness we got to get unified with. The secular consciousness is the one that separates itself from the whole. It's trapped in duality. So therefore, how do you know? His health start getting bad, and it start decreasing in energy. It's hooked up to the matrix, but it's disconnected through his consciousness. ये जो प्रकृति है, वो प्रकृति के साथ या तो आप जुड़े हुए रह सकते हो, या उससे आप भिन्न हो चुके हो. तो अगर भिन्न हो, अगर जुड़े हुए हो, तो आप अद्वैत में हो. You are in non-duality. और अगर आप भिन्न हो गए हो, तो आप द्वैत में हो, duality. आप और प्रकृति ये दोनों चीजें अलग हो जाती हैं. और जब आप अलग हो जाते हो प्रकृति से, तभी सारी दिक्कतें शुरू होती हैं. Now when we use that word sacred again, we usually use it for a place, a location, or an object. That's why we can make a temple sacred. Uh, sacred places on a planet. Those are sacred, but all of a sudden we're not sacred. <laughs> so now you've got to rededicate and really get a mindset of yourself on how sacred you are. All your ancestors is here. You understand? Your body remembers your grandmother from thousands of years ago. You don't remember, but it remembers. So when you bring back the value to yourself, you are honoring sacred holy ground. आपके भीतर आपके सारे पूर्वज बहुत सारी पीढ़ी जो है वो सब आपके भीतर ही है आपके शरीर में इस वक्त अभी आपका जो शरीर है उसके भीतर है तो अगर आपको ये सब पूरा प्रोसेस क्लीन अप करना है तो यू आर टू री डेडिकेट दोबारा अपने आप पे प्रायोरिटी लानी होगी अपने जीवन पर अप, अपनी ऊर्जाओं पर दोबारा आपको प्रायोरिटी लानी होगी devoted to a religious ceremony, respect, set aside for a particular purpose. Set aside for a particular purpose. Now everybody running around, especially a young person, I'm trying to find out what my purpose is. All you know is life. Your purpose is to first perpetrate life. That's it, live. <laughs> Ding. <laughs> जो मेन उद्देश्य है वो ये नहीं है कि ये कुछ कमाना है या बच्चों को बड़ा करना है ऐसे जो बाहरी उद्देश्य होते हैं जीना यही उद्देश्य है 
तो सही तरीके से जी रहे हैं अगर तो वही हमारे जीवन का उद्देश्य That's why the planet journey is a health message. I'm not trying to teach you how to be food free. First you must learn how to eat and then eat your way into food freedom. Does this make sense? Cuz what people is doing is abusing food. Just abusing it. It's there but to keep on eating now all you can eat but fair your stomach is only this big. This don't even make sense. <laughs> then you got to learn pranayama to teach you how to breathe again. You already breathe, but you got to learn how to breathe all over again. That shows how far we fail. Disconnected. But all the tools is already here within the temple. It's how you learn how to use the body cuz it already works with energy. It's an energy worker. शरीर जो है वो ऊर्जाओं के साथ ऐसे भी हमेशा काम करते ही रहता है. हमको केवल उसी चीज को थोड़े बेहतर तरीके से सीखना है जैसे हम प्राणायाम सीखते हैं तो प्राणायाम सीखने की नौबत क्यों आई क्योंकि सांस लेना तो हमें हमेशा आता ही था तो ऐसी कैसी नौबत आ गई कि सांस लेना भी किसी और को हमको सिखाना पड़ेगा सो so, जो प्रकृति है उसके साथ अगर जुड़े रहेंगे तो ऐसी नौबत नहीं आए So it automatically disconnects you from nature. You are nature. People say it, but what does that mean? Just because you can stand next to a tree? Uh, you're a self-sufficient being in your true nature. Everything you need, your body produces it. It don't need no external forces. The more you disconnect it from the source, the more external things you need. that will give you temporary fulfillment and then you keep craving more and more and never get filled but the more you come back to the source of your being your health improve you have more energy your sleep will be less and everything you need will be produced to keep you alive hum prakriti ke sath jude hue hain wo isliye unko prakriti se hi urjaye mil jati hai पर हमारे जैसे अगर हम प्रकृति से अलग हो गए तो फिर यही प्रकृति की सारी चीजों में से हमको ऊर्जाएं ढूंढनी पड़ती है मांगनी पड़ती है वहीं से लेनी पड़ती है तो अगर आप जुड़े हुए हैं तो जरूरत नहीं है उनके जैसे पर आप जुड़े हुए नहीं है तभी आपको यू टू ग्रैब ऑल ऑफ दैट फ्रॉम द एनवायरमेंट Why do I always say this? But they said, "Oh, you got a physical body. You got your emotional body. You got your mental body. Then you got your spiritual body. Now you're broken up in all of these pieces." And so, some people will come to me at the retreat. I'll tell them, "How do I work with my emotions?" I say, "Lose some weight." No, no, I'm not talking about that. I am talking about that. See, <laughs> you are all one body. You're looking at my mental body. You're looking at the way I am emotional. This is all one. But the old thought process was breaking everything into pieces. That's why you couldn't see a being of light. That's all you see is light. You're looking at a light being. I'm looking at a light being. But we think a light being is somewhere else far fetched because you can't see it. That's how the mind made everybody blind. शब्द का जो उपयोग कर रहे हैं उनका अर्थ यह है कि हम हर चीज का विभाजन करते हैं कि शरीर अलग मन अलग आत्मा अलग तो उनका कहना है कि मूल स्वरूप में सब एक ही है पर अगर हम विभाजन करते हैं तो इसीलिए उन्होंने कहा अध्यात्म में भी ऐसा हो गया है कि मात्र आत्मा की ओर जाते हैं पर शरीर को ध्यान नहीं देते अध्यात्म में इवन इन स्पिरिचुअलिटी ट्रेडिशनल स्पिरिचुअलिटी तो सब कुछ इकट्ठा है और सब कुछ एक ही है तो तीनों हर अगर इसका विभाजन ना करे right. तो फिर अपने आप सब कुछ एक ही दिखेगा और आप जुड़े हुए रहेंगे और समस्त प्रकृति के साथ But in the secular mind, uh-uh, heaven is up in the sky. <laughs> right? 
Right. I'll be happy after I die. That's what it did. It divided us. So therefore, you can't see heaven. So therefore, the things that are sacred, it's easier for you to disrespect them and violate them. That's why people disrespect each other. I'm dealing with life things. You're sacred. So I got to start treating you sacred. <laughs> तो ये अगर अलग-अलग हम अगर एक दूसरे से भी एक दूसरे को जब तक अलग गिनते हैं ना तब तक ये सेक्युलर कॉन्शियसनेस में रहेंगे वो मात्रा एयर पे या लाइट पे नहीं जीते हैं पर लव में पे भी जीते हैं प्रेम पे भी जीते हैं प्रेम क्यों बना रहता है मैं देख रहा हूँ कुछ दिनों से हमारे साथ हैं तो वो प्रेम इसीलिए बना रहता है क्योंकि वो स्वयं बालक के जैसे ही है हर किसी से ऐसे बिहेव करते हैं जैसे सालों से जान रहे हो तो वो प्रेम जो है वो नरिशमेंट देता है तो सेक्युलर मतलब जब हम विभाजन में की वृत्ति में रहते हैं कि ये व्यक्ति अलग है और मैं अलग हूँ तो हमको वहाँ से खुराक नहीं मिलेगा उस व्यक्ति से पर हम अगर ये जो प्रेम की गंगा ये अगर बह रही है तो वहाँ से भी हर जगह से हमको खुराक मिल सकता है। And there was even a time it made us think that the physical body ain't got nothing to do with spirituality. So therefore we abused it and we weren't talking other stuff that was fantasy. But wait a minute. For me to become a Breatharian, guess what I did? I came back into my physical body. I didn't want to leave it. Because this is the spirit. This is the window or the gateway to the invisible. In this sense, it's a lot of mistakes that the body is different and the mind and the body are different. And it doesn't have to take the body with the body. So, you can see that in the traditional spirituality, ये शरीर को हम ध्यान नहीं देते आज दोपहर को मुझे बता रहे थे ये गुरु बेली आपने वर्ड सुना होगा गुरु बेली मतलब हर गुरु का एक पेट होता है एक्स्ट्रा द पॉन्स इज देयर तो ऐसा क्यों कि ये गुरुओं के इतने बड़े बड़े पेट होते हैं क्योंकि उनकी सारी ऊर्जाएं उन्होंने मात्र आत्मा के दृष्टिकोण से लगाई हुई है उन्होंने शरीर और आत्मा को एक नहीं पकड़ा तो ये सब इकट्ठा है तो शरीर के माध्यम से भी आप आत्मा तक पहुंच सकते हैं now listen at this. Well, here we are in the land of India, and it is famous for the doctrine of liberation. Everybody grew up in the culture. Liberation, listen at this. Some form of freedom, spiritual freedom. Now listen at the definition of health. Health, what is health? The condition of the body and the degree to which it is free from illness. Free from illness, a liberation from illness. It's a degree. That's how you know you start getting liberated. ये भारत जो है वो कह रहे हैं कि एक मोक्ष प्रधान भूमि है। यहाँ हर व्यक्ति मोक्ष के बारे में बात करता है। इस चक्रवात में से बाहर कब आएंगे? कब दोबारा जन्म नहीं लेंगे? ऐसी बातें करता है। तो जो मूल भारत का मूल्य है, वो liberation का है, freedom का है। so, what is health? So, it is a freedom from illness. And illness is more than just physical. There is mental illness, emotional illness. But remember now, we're talking about oneness. It's all the same thing. But in the secular mind, they're different. How can you treat a mental illness if you don't treat the physical body? Now, how can you treat the physical body? It affects the mental illness. They one and the same. So when you deal with liberation, true liberation, everything is set free. Because it's all one. शरीर में अगर दिक्कत है तो मन को ठीक करके शरीर को ठीक कर सकते हो। मन में अगर दिक्कत है तो शरीर को ठीक करके मन को ठीक कर सकते हो। आप कहीं से भी the sea is salty from every shore, you know, there's a portal from everywhere. आप कहीं से भी शुरुआत कर सकते हो क्योंकि so therefore, let's look what the World Health uh, Organization said. They call who? WHO. <laughs> it is a state of complete physical, mental, and social well-being. It's a complete state of physical, mental, and emotional, social well-being. Now listen to also what they say. Not merely the absence of disease or infirmity. Now they got to say that because they got secular minds. <laughs> so now they're coming back saying, but don't mean that you won't have disease and absence from that. 
They got to say that. What else could they say? You understand? Because they divide it into parts and pieces. But through a true spiritual mind, uh-uh. It should be a state of complete physical, mental, and emotional well-being. And sickness and disease is a frequency. A frequency of division. A frequency away from the source. This is, how, this is what we're talking about. So when you come on a breath theory and journey to be food free, don't worry about are you eating or not eating. You must get on a path of a lifestyle that's going to start making you whole again. Making you become one again with the unified consciousness. That's the sustaining power. हमको ऐसे ही कुछ करना है जो करने से हम दोबारा पूरी प्रकृति के साथ जुड़ जाए so it's the ability to manage and adapt one thing in life that's the truth is change change always take place change is a job change is a location friends every day is different so when you deal with this breatharian journey perfect health is time management how do you use your time what are you doing with your time so therefore it's the ability to also adapt and deal to the changes that take place in life because that's guaranteed to always take place. जीवन में परिवर्तन हमेशा आते ही रहेगा तो अपने समय का उपयोग करके आप कैसे इस परिवर्तनशील जीवन के भीतर भी संभल कर जी सकते हैं वही कला है. This is good, Anne. And this is just clarifying to take this from myth to reality. So there's things you can do, we're going to do a meditation. One thing you can start doing, being on this path, is the meditations. Meditation is the foundation of living on prana. Just setting out food, no, that's far-fetched. You really have to get into meditation to allow that energy to start flowing and balancing itself out throughout the body. ये इनका मेन पॉइंट है ये चार पांच महीने पहले भी जब आए थे तभी यही पॉइंट मैं समझा था कि हम सबको बहुत लुभावना लगता है कि ऐसी ऐसी सिद्धि हो हमारे पास भी कि हमको खाने की जरूरत ना पड़े यस ना हाँ पर मात्र वो विचार से ये नहीं होता है अच्छा आप उसकी ओर प्रयास भी करेंगे कि मैं जो है कि मुझे अन्न की जरूरत ना पड़े मैं भूखा रहूंगा मैं वो लेवल पे पहुंच जाऊंगा पर उससे भी कुछ नहीं होना है तो कैसे होगा वट इज द एफर्टलेस वे आउट सबसे कम प्रयत्न से आप कैसे इस अवस्था तक पहुंच सकते हैं तो ये तब होता है जब उन्होंने कहा कि हम जुड़े हुए हैं तो हमको ये जो ऊर्जाएं जो हम अन्न से ले रहे हैं अन्न से लेने के बजाय यही सारी ऊर्जाएं हमें ध्यान से लेनी है तो यही उनकी सीक्रेट है कि ये ऐसा नहीं कि उनको एनर्जी की जरूरत नहीं है वन ही नीड्स एनर्जी बट ही ड्रॉज द एनर्जी From the environment, he he naturally draws it by default. He doesn't even have to meditate necessarily. उनके चक्र इतने खुल गए हैं कि स्वयं में भी वो सारी ऊर्जाएं हर जगह से क्योंकि इसमें भी ऊर्जा है ये माइक में भी ऊर्जा है आप में भी ऊर्जा है इस जमीन में भी ऊर्जा है तो जब चक्र गतिमान हो गए तो हर जगह से ऊर्जाएं वो स्वयं में भी खींच लेते हैं तो कैसे ये ऊर्जाओं को खींचना है और उनके साथ किस प्रकार से काम करना है वो अब सिखाएंगे सीखना है सबको Yes. <laughs> so that's number one, meditation. Number two, fasting. At least fast once a week in your lifestyle. Now notice that all religions on the planet got some form of fasting. In it. Now what they're telling you is, by backing up from the table, that connects you more with the source. See, there's many diet changes, but the best diet change is eating nothing at all. Now that's not even a diet change. <laughs> it is. And it will better your health over a period of time. Now we're creatures of habits. So when you start putting this new habit in continually, 
It'll look, over a period of time, you'll get used to it, and it will get easier. And all I say is one day a week. See, if you can't master one day, why take on more? People do that all the time. Just master one day, and you'd be surprised how far along you become. That's number two. So, the second point is that in a week, उपवास और वो अपना वो पराली उपवास की बात नहीं कर रहे हैं। India has India has very rich luxurious fast food. Oh yeah. It's not a fast actually. Right. So we are discussing the and so this is like the no food fast. Okay. But once a week. And that's the common denominator across all religions. Right. Start where you at. Yeah. She has the water necessary. Wherever you at, start from there. Don't overdo it. Some people might need to go on a juice fast. Some people could do the water. Some people could do uh, dry. But start where you at and be comfortable. Basically, I think uh, you have to ask your body, not your mind. Right. Because the mind will ask for many things, but the body doesn't need. Absolutely. And see, there was a time in the past, no pain, no gain. Now, since we got a lot more information, no brains, no gain. <laughs> Your spiritual journey should be fun. Make it fun. Back in the day, people beating up on themselves. You know, don't do all of that. That's not going to speed up the process. Take your time and enjoy yourself. So that's number three. Now, an exercise routine. Now, that don't mean you got to go buy a membership at the gym. That's not what we're talking about. It could be taking a walk, going out in the nature more. You understand? Get a 20-minute stretching routine going. Get that energy circulating to put this new habit back into the body. Because the more you um, work on the physical body, it works on the consciousness. Dear one, you feel better. Confidence builds up. You start having more energy. You start feeling good about yourself. And that allows you to treat other people good. Sometimes people treat other people mean because they feel bad. <laughs> तीसरा पॉइंट जो था वो उन्होंने कहा कि ये आप उपवास भी अगर करते हैं हफ्ते में एक दफा तो वो पूरा प्रोसेस जो है वो उत्साहमय होना चाहिए उसमें आनंद होना चाहिए ऐसा नहीं कि आप कुछ वर्जित हैं और नहीं खा रहे हैं और आपका मूड भी खराब हो गया नहीं अगर आपको जूस की जरूरत पड़े तो आप जूस लीजिए फल की जरूरत पड़े तो फल लीजिए आप जहाँ पे है उसको रिस्पेक्ट कीजिए अगर आप खाने के बिना नहीं रह सकते हैं और आपको भीतर कोई एम्बिशन आया कि नहीं आज तो हर थर्सडे को नहीं खाऊंगा और फिर हट की वजह से यू नो थ्रू विल पावर थ्रू एक्सर्टिंग ऑल योर विल पावर यूर डूइंग इट देन इज नॉट वर्थ इट तो आप जैसा भी है वो आनंदमय और उत्सवमय होना चाहिए जहां भी है उससे थोड़ा बेहतर और चौथा पॉइंट जो कहा कि एक्सरसाइज मतलब ये शरीर जो है वो चलने के लिए बना है मूवमेंट यू नो इज द वेरी फूड ऑफ द बॉडी तो किसी ना किसी प्रकार की एक्सरसाइज उसका मतलब ये नहीं कि कोई स्ट्रेन्यूअस वर्कआउट करना है या जिम ज्वाइन करना है नॉर्मल भी 20-25 मिनट दिन में तरीके से अगर स्ट्रेचेस वगैरह कर लिए तो दिस इज ऑल अ पार्ट ऑफ द हेल्थ मैसेज दैट ही इज गिविंग एंड नाउ आई गॉट टू थ्रो वन एक्चुअली दैट थ्रो द सेट कम्युनिटीज ऑल द टाइम आई कम टू हियर एंड से नाउ यू हैव टू स्टार्ट टेकिंग एडवांटेज ऑफ योर अपर क्लास प्रिविलेज पीपल से व्हाट डू यू मीन बाय दैट नॉट मी नॉट मी ये यू यू कैन इवन स्टार्ट इफ यू वांट टू यू गॉट फैमिली ग्रैंडमा मेकिंग यू कुकीज राइट <laughs> you are in a privilege to where you can afford to take a day off for yourself to massage yourself, be with yourself. You don't have to beat up on yourself no more. So that's a privilege in a way that humanity is now not back into the survival levels that it used to be. Do you understand? In other words, make your life into a retreat. Learn to start pampering yourself and take advantage of your health on that type of level. See, it, the reason why I throw this at people, like what I tell them in America, even a homeless person is overweight. You understand? You got access to all of this stuff if you want to. This is a game we're making, so start taking advantage of it and take it to another level in your life experience. Does this make sense? See, we just got spoiled. <laughs> Right. So now, it is okay to be spoiled, but pamper yourself along the way, have a good time in your spiritual journey, and make your life into a retreat. I used to take a day out, light candles for myself. That's the day I take a bath. Right. 
That was my day. So allow these energies to start flowing for you, start working for you, and you'd be surprised how easy this is to go into food freedom. हफ्ते में एक दिन ऐसा रखे उन्होंने कहा कि अपर क्लास प्रिविलेज मतलब अगर आप समृद्ध हैं तो आपको इतना तो करना चाहिए कि हफ्ते में एक दिन काम नहीं करना चाहिए और उस दिन स्वयं का जतन करना चाहिए यू शुड बी टेकिंग केयर ऑफ योर सेल्फ पैम्परिंग योर सेल्फ फिर चाहे वो मसाज हो या कैंडल्स के साथ बैठ के या टब में लेट के उन्हें बहुत पसंद है तो ऐसे आप स्वयं के वो हफ्ते में एक दिन आपके स्वयं के लिए होना चाहिए तभी आपको ये सारी ऊर्जाएं अपने आप मिलेगी This was the fifth point. That's the fifth point. This makes sense, huh? And see, even if you ain't plan on going food free, always think health. You understand? You might think about food freedom ten years from now. There's other life experiences you want to have because that's what it's all about: life experiences. There was a time I never tasted sushi before, and I said, "There's no way in the world I'm gonna leave this planet without seeing what sushi tastes like." <laughs> that was already food free, but I wanted to taste it. And when I tasted, seeing that it was good, I was there a whole week. But once I enjoyed myself, it was over with. Never picked it up again. So food don't have nothing to do with keeping you alive. It just seems like that right now. But when you get on this path and start breaking that illusion, that belief system, then you can start having fun with this new skill that you develop. आप सबको लगता है क्या लगता है मुझे भी यही लगता था और अब तक लगता है रियल में कि फूड खाना क्यों खाते हैं हम हाँ जीने के लिए चाहे ताकि हम जीते रहें पर उनका कहना है कि जीने के लिए खाने की कोई आवश्यकता नहीं है पर फिर भी आप खा सकते हैं क्यों क्यों जस्ट फॉर एन एक्सपीरियंस मात्र उस अनुभव के लिए उस स्वाद के लिए आप खा सकते हैं तो खाने खाना वर्जित नहीं है पर खाने की जो वजह है वो ये नहीं होनी चाहिए कि बिना खाए आप जी नहीं सकते आपको मात्र वो अनुभव चाहिए वो स्वाद उस क्षण में चाहिए तो आप खा लीजिए Have fun as a group, unified consciousness to help each other. Does this make a sense? Because it's hard trying to do it by yourself. Start leading a walk for everybody to go on. This is the family get together again. So now we're in an age where you can be wise to bring everybody along. Because the best teacher is the teacher by example, and it really ain't about the words. So I enjoyed y'all again, and right now we're about to do some meditation. <laughs> now we're going to do us a qigong, and let me see the best way to do this. We're going to do this one standing up. And it's about getting nice and loose here. We've been sitting down. Try to so, get some space. Here. Right, get a little space in between you if we can. Because we're going to be moving this energy a certain way, and I'll move this right over here. Yeah, get down a little bit in front. Of me. Voila. Perfecto. All right, we're going to do some warm ups. Now, the center of our body is our spinal cord, and it shows us that when you see the Kundalini energy, the two serpents going up the staff. When I was in Egypt just now, before I got here, they had that symbolism all over the place, the serpent coming up this pole. So therefore, we want to stretch up the body going down the center, and the more loosen up the body, the easier the energy flows by its nature. So right now, we're going to loosen up the neck muscles. शरीर जितना ढीला छोड़ेंगे, शिथिल छोड़ेंगे, उतनी ऊर्जाएं अपने आप ही प्रवाहित होंगी. You know, the whole idea is to keep the body loose and relaxed. So we're going to make circles going towards the right. Go at your own pace, and just loosen up all of that tension. Tension in the body is its own energy blockage within itself. Nice and relaxed. Okay, that's good. Now the other direction.
And that's good. Now we're going to work on our shoulders. Our shoulders accumulate a lot of stress. So now let's make circles going towards the front. Nice and relaxed. Okay, that's good. Now we go backwards. Just allow that stress to loosen itself up. And that's wonderful. Now open up your feet shoulder width apart, hands on your hips. And now we go to the right and loosen up all that kundalini energy <laughs> in the hip area. There's a lot of uh, energy blockages that usually starts in a person's hips, especially when you start uh, aging and getting a little older. So loosening up these hips is very important for the energy to flow upwards. Now the other direction, reverse. Just breathe normally and allow that tension to loosen itself up. All right, that's good. Now we're ready. Now we're going to do four positions in this Qigong. Qi Gong just means energy exercise. Qi means energy, Gong exercise. So the first position, we're going to have our feet about a little shoulder width apart. Bend the knees slightly so that the energy from the earth can automatically come upwards. In the first position, we're going to have our hands in front of us in a ball. So we're going to be in this position. This will be first position. Second position, when I tell you to move, it's going to be up near the shoulders like you're holding a beach ball. Nice and relaxed. This would be second position. Third position would be prayer hands right in front of the heart chakra. And then fourth position would be hands all the way up, standing like a tree. Now the whole idea, okay, that's good. You could just breathe normally. You ain't got to do nothing with the breath work. The mind, it don't matter where it goes. The mind is the problem. <laughs> so we just want to put the body in the right position, and it's automatically going to work with the atmosphere around it. And you'll see this, how the energy started increasing on its own. So now we're going to go to the first position. Knees slightly bent, nice and relaxed, then you're comfortable, and just relax. Relax the shoulders. Relax the abdomen. Relax the hips. You can keep your eyes open or closed. It does not matter. And just allow the energy to flow around us. Any sensations or tension in the body, just relax into it. body knows what to do with the energy. And all energy runs a circuit. Now we're going to go to second position up near your shoulders, like you're holding a ball. Nice and loose and relaxed. Just rest into the energy. Allow the energy to do the work for you. Relax the shoulders. Relax the muscles in the face. your feet to soak into the earth. We're going to stay one more minute in this position. Just feel the body, feel the sensations. It's okay if it's shaking, feel the tension.
on the third position, prayer position in front of the heart chakra. Just rest into it and relax. <clears throat> Feel the energy in the hands. Relax the shoulders. Relax the crown chakra. All this cosmic energy is raining on top of us. the hips, relax the whole body, the more you relax the easier the energy flows. Fourth position, hands all the way up, and this is standing like a tree. Bodies knows how to practice photosynthesis. Energy is all in the atmosphere. Allow the energy to flow with the body. Relax the hands. Relax the shoulders. the hips, one more minute in this position. Slowly bring the hands down. Make a ball in front of you. Feel that ball, that energy between your hands. You can make it big or small. Feel that prana, feel that flow. And now slowly move it side to side. Go at your own pace. Feel that energy flow. This energy is all around us. Nice and slow. Wherever the mind goes, the energy flows. Just play with it. Just feel that flow of energy. We're energy beings. This energy has the power to sustain us. And we use it for everything. And it's everywhere you go. Now you can play with it and bring it up. Feel that flow. Down any way you want to. And now, if you want, you can add a little step into it. I know we got a crowded room, but it's okay. Feel that flow of energy that's all in the atmosphere. Just move slow. Step when you feel like stepping. Move the body, put it into it, and feel that energy flow. Very powerful. The more you work with the light, the more your body can accumulate this energy. Move it any way you feel like moving. 
Now if you want to, you can have two balls in two different hands and move them both separate. And move any way you feel like moving. Anywhere the body moves, the energy moves with it. And the more relaxed you move, the easier the energy flows. Nice and relaxed. When I was in America, this energy is here. It's in Europe. It's in Asia. Africa, everywhere you go, you could be sustained by this force. Okay. Feel this power any way you feel like moving. Make this connection with this prana, the unified consciousness. Nice and slow. Go even slower. This feeling. You can step anywhere you want to step as you move with this energy flow. You don't have to stay in one spot. Move around with this energy. Move anywhere the energy moves you. Feel that flow. Feel that connection. Every time you move, the breath changes, the energy changes, the blockages opens up in the body. Feel that flow. This is nature. Everywhere you go, you are nature. Whether you're outside or in a house, this energy is always available and it's unlimited. Feel that power. going through us, it's going around us, and it's unlimited. The more you prepare the body for this energy, the more it can take on. The more you meditate, the more your body can take on life. Feel that flow. Now we can rub our hands together, all this energy we collected. And this time we're going to do something real good. Let's make a big circle. Keep the center open. So I could come this way. <laughs> Rub your hands together. Now we're going to project our energy into the middle and make a nice ball within the middle. Wherever your thoughts go, that's where the energy goes. Make it nice and strong within the middle. You can feel that energy. Now I'm going to put a word in. And then we're going to go to my right, and everybody put a word in that comes to your mind. Love. Peace. Energy. Jesus. Shanti. Bless. Oh. And Abundance. Love. Creation. Compassion. Everything. Playfulness. Initiation. Love. Yes. All right, any more words? Just throw them on in. Creativity. <laughs> Silence. Freedom. Prana. Beauty. Strength. Life. Joy. Courage. Holiness. Oh, it's getting stronger and stronger. You feel that? <laughs> now. We're going to put the 
earth, all sentient beings. Put your family, friends, and loved ones inside the bowl. Make it nice and strong. And on the count of three, we're going to lift it up to the universe. Ik, do, team. <laughs> <laughs> up, up, and away. Coming from Mumbai, India. We're changing the energy matrix. <laughs> awesome. Now all this energy we collected, we can rub our hands together. Give yourself a nice energy shower. And this is what it's all about, working with this energy. When you're living on planet, you're basically becoming an advanced energy worker. And this is our birthright. This is what we do. So the more you start meditating and taking your walk, slow it down sometime and just feel that flow. You're sitting in the chair, sometimes just sit there and relax and allow the energy to flow. It's everywhere, but it's all about you using it and becoming aware of it. And as you're on your health path and you see your health start improving, like I said, enjoy yourself. Then you start bringing in a little more responsibility, okay? Instead of eating two pieces of cake, eat one. <laughs> you understand? Take your time and you'll see this magic and this self-realization begin to start happening. So I enjoyed that once again. Can we take some questions? Yeah. Oh. Questions. So we'll take some questions. You might have some questions. Yes, yes. I got one. Yes, please. Okay, please sit. Yeah, we can put back in our sit position. Uh. Sir, what is your age? <laughs> Five old. I, I usually say, I, I calculated it one time. I'm 600 moons old. <laughs> 600 full moons old. So 600 full moons. <laughs> 600 full moons old. Yeah. So uh, the purpose of life, as you explained, is to unite with the universal energy. Now, how does being a Britarian help us make that journey faster? Oh, boy, that's a good one. All right, here we go. <laughs> Because what happens is, this is like an exploration of consciousness. And when you constantly have this craving and other things on your mind that you need this and need that, it keeps you from moving forward in your exploration of consciousness because you're constantly craving wants. Now one thing that's here in the human family, there's things that are essential and then there's things that's extra. But what's hurting everybody isn't the essentials. Those are already met. You're chasing the extras. So what happens is there is a cutback process start coming. And you say, how will breatharian helps to move? Well, first of all, since this is a health message, your health is guaranteed to improve. Because when we look at preventable diseases, 99.9 .9 of them is dealing with what people eat. So therefore, when you ain't got that to worry about now, there's a new opening of a thought that comes forth that you can start exploring. And your life becomes more magical. How would I say that? You'll have more energy to do things, you'll have the help to do it, and you can create some things you never thought you could create before. Like for instance, I was telling people, what do you do? I became a painter, I became a musician, all of this stuff. It, I had the time to do it, the energy to do it. So there's some things now that you might want to create, but there's other things that's in the way that you think is necessary, but once those illusions start breaking, you can start laying stuff down, and this is a great journey to be on. You don't really want to go backwards. But it's a process. <laughs> All right, anybody else? Uh, okay, so one thing that uh, this whole exercise that you did was amazing. <laughs> And there was some uh, stiffness in the back which has really gone out, so I can feel the yeah. energy. The energy is yeah. been really good. I'm sure everyone How many of you felt something moving? Yeah. <laughs> and that's what it's all about, working with it. My question to you is, when in the session you said that uh, if we, there are three types of illnesses, mental, uh, physical and emotional. And if we work on even one of these illness, Automatically, the others also heal? Right. Absolutely. Any work you do on a mental mind works on a physical body. Any work you do on a physical body helps the mental mind. 
because they're actually one. See, it's us that's breaking it down with that duality. That's what we need to catch her on to. But it's actually one and the same thing. And it's a wonderful thing when she wants to become union, connected. That's where it's at. Absolutely. Anybody else? So, Percy, welcome and thank you so much, everyone. Oh, thank you. Uh, just curious to know that, okay, you experienced this and you felt good about it. It helped your journeys, multiple journeys, physical, mental, and causal. Yeah. What brings you to want to share it and make others aware? Oh, why man. wasn't it enough to just be in bliss yourself? And why, why, right. why, why the need? Right, this will get me. When I ran into living on Prana and seeing it, what got me was they had this 21-day process that I was reading about that was already on the planet. Now, I was kind of mad. Why didn't they teach me this in school if this is going on on the planet? I didn't know that this was going on. I'm in the dark. <laughs> so that's one thing. Then, number two, there wasn't that much information out there at that time. I really had to seek and try to get my life experience to help others. That was number two. Then in 2015, I went to San Francisco and started talking to a bigger crowd, and there was a lot of people who wanted more information or were scared to break their different things and was glad that I came out and said something. So that dedicated me to bring out more information to at least make it available for people because I didn't see my own predicament. Now, luckily, I just had to keep going on my own zeal. But other than that, there's a lot of people, if it's not out here, they could wake up and it's, if the information ain't there, you don't, you don't really have nothing coming. So not only myself now, from 2015 until now, most people on Prana is all working together. This is like a new age we in to really bring it out to the masses and let it lay where it lays, but it's to help people. Now, keep in mind, I used to be a minister in the church, too, so that was playing on me. You know, don't show people the way or stuff like that. That's all I'm in there. Your question was that you were living from this practice. You could live in your own life. Why do you teach the others? Why do you teach the others? They say that when they started, they didn't get so much help. But when they started it, they said that everyone will check it. And for them, it was a little difficult for them. But for the rest of them, they will make it easy. So they will share this knowledge. So it's wonderful that you have developed such a process in you that you have not taken for so many years or something like that. I feel that if you, if you can do something uh, by developing it further, that it can help in uh, some uh, pro removal of some problems and diseases because it has such a high energy. Mm -hmm. And today atmosphere is totally polluted and people are getting a lot of disease from, from uh, atmosphere itself. Mm -hmm. so if you can develop something like that, that for a particular disease, such type of, uh, you can say, meditation or are taking energy in a different direction can help in easing out the problems which the people are having today, mm -hmm. then I think that it will be very useful oh, absolutely. for the society. Right, absolutely. That's why this is a health message. See, we ain't even taking it far like it's something magical. It's nothing but a health message. And you're right. And the people become more conscious. This helps with the transformation because we have the power to change not only ourselves, but the society we live in. We're powerful beings. <laughs> Absolutely. ये उनका कहना ये कोई जादू नहीं है वो जो कर रहे हैं वो इट इज नो मैजिक इट इज जस्ट हेल्थ मैसेज अगर आप इस प्रकार से जीने लगेंगे तो आप भी इस अवस्था तक पहुंच सकते हैं because one of the things that get people addicted is the separation of not having family and friends. We're in a big age where depression is very high because of that. And why? Because the computer's their new friend. <laughs> they forgetting that one-on-one -on -one contact of being with each other and giving each other support. So always keep that in mind as we grow and we develop and bring in this new paradigm shift. <laughs> तो मतलब ये प्राणवायु पे जीने की जैसे उन्होंने वो प्रैक्टिस करी और हमने देखा 
पर वैसे वो कह रहे हैं कि अगर एक दूसरे के साथ जुड़े रहते हैं तो प्रेम की भी जो शक्ति है उस पर भी वो जीते हैं During the day, there are these moments where I really feel drained out, and I think I I need a coffee or maybe some snack. But is there a short process where I won't feel tired and I can do some kind of you know little meditation, which will bring up the energy again? Uh, do you have a now a, a ha- routine that you follow, or you know, during the day when you feel like drained out, do you recharge yourself? How See, you one do? thing a person is under is under they are under the Pavlov effect. You ever heard that with the dog? You ring the bell. <laughs> And then the saliva and the chemicals start taking place. See, we're chemical beings too. So a lot of that new habit you develop, that's just the alarm clock in the body saying, you know every day at 2 o'clock we drink cappuccino, right? <laughs> so a lot of that ain't so much you. It's basically the habit that you put inside you, that clock, and all these different reactions start taking place. So to change those habits into something else, this is why I'm bringing up a planning thing or a fasting day, you know, to master that day. And then that day will bleed into the other days. Not saying you got to fast more, but when that temptation come up to do uh, that or what you didn't want to do at certain times, now you got enough strength and willpower to say no because what build up in you, I, I could do a whole day without something now. You follow me? You recreating yourself slowly and this will bleed into the rest of your life. So this is awesome. उनका सवाल ये था कि कभी-कभी दिन में ऊर्जाएं कम हो जाती है तभी हम कॉफी के लिए जाते हैं वगैरह और उस प्रकार से भी इंडल्ज तो उसके बदले हर क्वेश्चन इज कि ऐसी कोई पद्धति है जिससे हम रिचार्ज उसी क्षण हो सके तो उन्होंने जवाब दिया कि हफ्ते में एक दफे अगर आप वो प्राणिक डे रखोगे उसको उपवास भी नहीं कहेंगे उपवास थोड़ा नेगेटिव वर्ड लगता है तो प्राणिक डे रखोगे तो अपने आप आप में इतनी अवेयरनेस होगी कि जब भी आप लो भी हो रहे हैं अगर आपकी ऊर्जाएं कम हो रही है तो आप इमीजिएटली वो कॉफी के लिए नहीं जाएंगे आप उस वक्त भी सतर्क रहेंगे और जो आपके लिए सही नहीं है वो उस वक्त आप नहीं करेंगे पर उसे यू हैव टू बिल्ड दैट आप हर हफ्ते अगर एक दिन प्राणिक डे रखते हैं तो धीरे धीरे आपकी चेतना जो है वो सतर्क हो जाएगी एक्चुअली यू विल ऑब्जर्व योरसेल्फ इन योर बॉडी एंड यू नो व्हेन यू स्टार्ट ईटिंग लेस यू गेट मोर एनर्जी एंड यू विल यू रियली फील दैट यू नो व्हेन यू स्टार्ट डूइंग इट See when you go for a wedding or a party, you come home lethargic. You want to go to sleep. What is that? Morphine. It is taking away your. You know, you just want to lie. So, but the more you are with less food. And what about your parents at their sixties? They get really tired, and they're like, we don't have the energy anymore. So, is there some kind of short, like a, you know, like a quick fix? Oh my process. gosh! <laughs> <laughs> that one I was just showing you. That's what I was just showing you. The instant coffee. Oh, yeah. I was in Israel and uh, some girl, her mother, her grandmother is like 98 years old. So she sent me a picture. Her grandmother was doing the standing like a tree. <laughs> But anyway, that's why I introduce a lot of these chigongs. They're easy. You can feel energy fast. And you ain't got to think about nothing, no stars, no trees. You can breathe, you can think about anything. When the body's in the right position, it automatically does it. So therefore, what you're asking me basically for older people. Now the old idea was, the older you get, you lose energy, and the young person got the uh, energy. But that's not true. Uh-oh, that's why this, this is getting good. <laughs> you're actually gain more energy when you get older. <laughs> Because the more somebody be in this realm, you get an X-ray about 36 or more X-rays every year. Uh, that's why when they do car- car- carbon dating, when something is older, a bone, it has higher radiation. So that's why when you're dealing with these meditations, the first phase is your blood circulation start getting on track. Your health start improving. The second level will start going into the muscles. You energetically can feel you can lift more. Then the third level will start going into the bone. That's where it gets good. When it goes into the bone, it never leaves. So that's why this is a good paradigm shift we're changing into. When you start working with energy work, um, if you're meditating like this, as you start aging, you should improve year after year and get stronger instead of the latter. 
Now, I know we've seen that on the ladder, but a lot of them didn't have the information that we have now. So even dealing with these Qigongs, that was easy. It's a big hit for older people, because you ain't got to do much. You can even do it sitting down. sitting down. And it's catching on more and more. And then now you see that energy growing. Boy, look at them. They picked up quick. Right. And have you ever seen that um, teaching um, the five rights? The yeah, five the Tibetan, Tibetan rights. rights. He purposely got people at a certain age limit. Why did he do that? Because a young person, they really don't think, they think they're going to look like that forever. <laughs> they don't think the body going to go through no changes like that. Right. But when you see the body go through these changes, and you get into these practices, you usually see how fast it will work on you to get you back in health. Right. Because you can transform yourself and transform before. So therefore, these practices, since we got this information now, the older you get, the more energy you have the ability to accumulate and use it the right way. So even as you're aging, you can start eating less. That start coming with the territory. Usually a young person, they'll eat a whole cake like it ain't nothing and still keep the little weights. <laughs> you get older, they know better. Now I can't eat no cake like that at this hour. Uh-uh. So it's a whole different ball game of thought again. But we're going into it. So this is radical. Just like we often say that with the age of age, there will be more problems, there will be more problems. But their point is that there is no need to take something with that. If we talk about carbon dating, that radiation is more than the old bones, if you do excavation. So if you are living from the right pranali, the age of age is more than the age of age, then you will be able to gain so much energy with your energy. So the more you age, you got to be more energetic perhaps than the younger one. Absolutely. It's, it's, so what we typically believe is very counterintuitive and what he's sharing from his experience is uh, totally different and it is a belief system that with age things are going to get worse. It's just a program and that is one program, another program that we need to drop. I am wondering if somebody should ask him about uh, sleep and death as well. He has interesting viewpoint. <laughs> yeah. He said we can live up to 200 years. Yeah. Right. Well, this is what I said. I said there's somebody who's born right now who's going to hit 200 years like it ain't nothing due to the increase of knowledge. Now, me, I'm going for it. I ain't planning on dying. That's all I know is right. <laughs> <laughs> That's one of the greatest challenges you can take, and I love challenges. Sleep. And my your sleep decreases. Yeah, for sure. my, my question is about sleep. So you, you can transmit this energy into your, uh, you know, you stop sleeping. So could you talk? I know you've done it, so could right. you talk about it? It's, this is good. The reason why we sleep is basically to recharge. That's bottom line. That's why we do it. So the more your health starts getting better, the less sleep you need. That comes with the territory. So just like we was running that energy, and energy blocks just start lo loosening it up more and more, the way you know you're getting more prana, you automatically go start decreasing in sleep. See, sleep is an unconscious meditation. The body goes and relaxes, just like we was doing. So it can recharge, it can heal itself. So when you're doing conscious meditation, you're actually in a conscious sleep. You're getting those same benefits that you were sleeping, but you're doing it in an awakened state. So therefore, that sleep over here decreases, and this start increasing. Now, you can eradicate sleep. What does that mean? Uh-oh. My sleep now is like two to four hours a night. And it all depends what I got going on, too. You can cut it down through meditation also. You understand? To where, but you'll basically still lay there. But still, you got a lot of energy. So, uh, just to... So, I'll just translate, otherwise I'll forget. So, two to four hours a night, and they said that the sleep is not a way to sleep. But you also have a way to sleep. But you also have a way to sleep. Because you also have a way to sleep. Because you also have a way to sleep. और ध्यान जो है वो नींद जैसा ही है पर आप कॉन्शियसली वो चीज कर रहे हैं जागरूक हो करके तो जैसे ही आप ध्यान का प्रमाण बढ़ाएंगे वैसे वैसे अपने आप नींद का प्रमाण करेंगे your energy level is going to go up and your sleep will decrease. If you don't have nothing to do, 
you're going to go eat the ground yourself out and put yourself back to sleep. That's what's going to happen. तो जैसे ये ऊर्जा है आप बढ़ाएंगे तो नींद कम होगी और फिर नींद जब कम होगी तभी अगर आपके पास कुछ सृजनात्मक नहीं है करने को इफ यू डोंट हैव समथिंग क्रिएटिव टू डू आउट ऑफ बोरडम आप खाने लगेंगे वापस जिसकी वजह से वापस नींद बढ़ जाएगी और वापस चक्कर स्टार्ट हो जाएगा आशीष भी वार्निंग दास समथिंग कर रहा है Something else, but you are suggesting. So I want to know the procedure of fasting in your way. And other question is, what is your age? Oh, he—that was the first answer he gave. Yeah, fifty. Five zero. Yeah, and also, okay, the procedure of fasting in India is. But what I do know is, fasting on the planet as a whole that humanity is going into is on the scene like nothing before. Even in the medical profession, they're basically saying a starvation diet, that's what they call it. You live longer. He who eat less, live longer. That's all across the board. So what we're saying basically is, it ain't so much of the procedures. Go from where you're at. I seen a man on social media say, well, I drive faster uh, a few days ago and it was terrible time. All these things, it was terrible. And I said, have you ever fasted before? No. Why did you drive fast? You, you're not in a position to drive fast. Go from where you're at. See, fasting just means taking something away for a period of time. You can fast on salt for a week. You will see changes on your body big time. You can change on, fast on drinking soda pop. I seen a man stop drinking soda pop for seven days and he lost all his weight. Never changed the rest of the diet. See, we got to understand what it is. You can fast from stop smoking cigarettes for a day and watch the body change itself. The body has a memory and a record on every experience that we're doing. As soon as you stop an experience or bring in a new one, it will transform itself for that new experience. So therefore, you got to ask yourself, where do you start at? You don't need to go too far because that's what our mind thinks. That's what you would bring it up easier. The mind going to tell you to go all the way out like things are going to go faster. No, it's not. You can have a fast on a soup day. Eating soup was better than what you've been eating all week with the big sandwiches you're not just saying. That's where it's about, being easy on yourself again. And that's how we identify what a fast is. This is heavy. If, if fasting was not important, you can, even right now Lent is going on for Catholic. So we all, even our different religions have fasting periods. So that shows the importance of fasting. Right. Oh, it's so funny. I was in <laughs> Egypt during Ramadan, so I had some of my Muslim friends around me, and I was talking food freedom. See? And I could explain it since yes. they were going through Ramadan. See how Shaitan was tempting you to eat that sandwich? But you stuck <laughs> with it, right? That's right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. He beat it. But then, you know, after Ramadan, of course, they was filling up, you know. But anyway, everybody had their improvements. It was easy to teach because everybody was dealing with the same temptations, the same habits to try to break out of those old habits to bring in something new for a certain accomplishment. Food freedom, we're just bringing on the other lid of it that was taken away that you could go for longer periods of time or indefinitely by running this energy because the reason why we eat in the first place is for energy. That's what it's all about. You got fossil fuels, even the nations is dealing with it. They're trying to go from gas and oil, instead of going into the earth to get it, to utilize the sun, the rivers, biofuels, something else that would be a lot cheaper and a lot easier to do. And we could do the same thing. Just for electricity, we use all the other things, solar power, etc. So, why do we think about the same thing in that area? Now this is the good part. This life we're taking it for granted. The average person just think it begins and ends at that switch. <laughs> right, especially when you don't pay the bill. Right. <laughs> but this is being generated somewhere outside the city. That's where it sources from. And there's a whole system taking place. Hundreds of people is taking place in this operation. 
They're going to go get the there's trucks coming in with the coal, all this other stuff. They got to keep a fire lit constantly. And if any of those procedures don't get met, the light, we call it an outage. They got to work on it. But people that's around the clock is making sure this is taking place so you can have it when it's available, whether if you use it or not. So it's the same way with us. Actually, the source of our energy, this is just a vehicle we're using, is coming and being generated from somewhere else. That's a whole other lesson. अगर ये स्विच शुरू करते हैं तो लगता है कि वहां से पावर आया पर सत्य वो नहीं है सत्य ये है कि पावर स्टेशन से पावर आया तो वैसे ही हम जो खाते हैं हमको लगता है वहां से ऊर्जा मिल रही है पर वो जो खाना है वो कहाँ से बना है तो वो किसी और ऊर्जाओं से वो खाना पैदा हुआ है तो कोई कोई और ऊर्जा है सूर्य की ऊर्जा पकड़ लो पर्यावरण की ऊर्जा पकड़ लो जो खाने के स्वरूप में है तो आप ये मिडल मैन को हटा दो और आप डायरेक्टली भी उस चीज को ले सकते हो Now listen at this. Oh, now this light. I just mentioned human potential. Oh, good. Now listen at this. For this light to come on, though, you know, through the electricity that's coming in this building, they had to dumb it down so it could be, so it could be just enough to light the equipment that's needed. But at the power plant, it's way bigger on how much energy there is. But if they were to bring all that energy here, it will blow out the lights. It's too much. Does this make any sense? Yeah. So we live in this UV, this UV spectrum. <coughs> a gamma ray is a whole lot of energy. Your body can't handle all of that. So you have to upgrade the equipment to be able to handle the bigger influx of energy that's out there. It's out there. So just like we were just playing with the energy just now. Your body can handle that, but the more and more through meditation you transform it. Now you have upgraded it to handle more and more of the energy forces that's already out there. Does this make any sense? So it has to be dumbed down. So even outside this building, there's what you call a transformer that has to dumb it down even more, all along the way. And that's what we're dealing with as a human. हाँ आज ये जो ऊर्जा है हमको ये जो इलेक्ट्रिसिटी आती है रिलायंस से या जियो से कहीं से भी तो हमको एक स्टेप डाउन ट्रांसफार्मर हुआ इज एन इंजीनियर विल अंडरस्टैंड स्टेप डाउन ट्रांसफार्मर लगता है ताकि उसका जो वोल्टेज है वो ऐसा हो कि हमारा घर उसे बर्दाश्त कर पाए तो वैसे ही प्रकृति में भी बहुत ऊर्जाएं हैं और ये पूरी की पूरी ऊर्जा अगर हम ऐसे ही ले लेंगे ये की वगैरह हम जो करते हैं अगर ज्यादा लेने लगेंगे तो हमारे शरीर के साथ भी हमारे अंदर भी देर इज एन इंटायर इलेक्ट्रोमैग्नेटिक फील्ड विद्युत चुंबकीय जो शक्ति है तो यहाँ भी गड़बड़ हो सकती है इसीलिए हमें हमारे शरीर को तैयार करना पड़ता है ताकि वो इस एनर्जी को थोड़ी डम डाउन करके हल्की बना करके हमारे शरीर के भीतर हम उसका प्रवाहन करते रहे सो वी Somebody transformed themselves where they was handling a lot more energy. That's it. They weren't no different than us. They just understood the concept of transformation. ये हम ये जो चित्र वगैरह देखते हैं भगवान के पीछे वो एक आभा मंडल होता है. तो वो उस व्यक्ति ने जिसको हीलो कहते हैं इंग्लिश में उस व्यक्ति ने अपने आप पे काम किया है इतना तब जा करके वो जो बाहरी ऊर्जाएं हैं ये सारी उसको प्रवाहित कर पाए. अगर वो सीधा सीधा ले लेते तो उनके शरीर में भी गड़बड़ हो जाती तो ये शरीर को तैयार करना मेकिंग द वेसल रेडी इज द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट पार्ट एंड इन द कल्चर दिस थिंग्स वी डू नाउ यू रियली डोंट अंडरस्टैंड व्हाट दे कम फ्रॉम इट्स सॉर्ट ऑफ लाइक हियर इन द एशियाटिक कंट्रीज दे से कम हियर लाइक दिस नाउ व्हाई डू दे डू दैट बिकॉज़ समबडी इन एंशिएंट टाइम्स आई गारंटी समबडी हैज सच अ बिग एनर्जी इफ दे पुट इट दे फिंगर एट यू टू कम हियर यू कैन फील इट्स लाइक शूटिंग अ गन That would be disrespectful. Come here. The energy was high, but we could do it now. Charge it up. Just relax for a minute. And I'm putting it right on the heart chakra. I projected it off my hand. Do you feel that? And we do it all the time. So the more you charge up from a distance, you can be doing the same thing. So they were so charged up. Of course, you don't do this to nobody no more. Somebody get offended, man. Why you shoot, shoot me? Come here. We still doing it. So if our ancestors did it, we could do it again, right? So if 
Oh man, there's so much. Yeah. So I think you're talking, y'all gotta sit me down. <laughs> yeah. I think you also have yeah. So um, when we were doing the exercise, the first thing that came into my mind was if I if I'm making myself more vulnerable to the pollution and not to the pure energy that we are talking about. So what is the correlation between this pollution that's all over and the energy? Does energy all What is the wrong things coming? <laughs> right. <laughs> now, when I first came to India, believe me, people on social media was like, well, India's polluted. What about the pollution? The la, la, la. I said, my body could get rid of this pollution in the air. It could get rid of it easier than that sandwich you just ate. Now listen. <laughs> इसका कहने का मतलब यह है कि हम जो ये पोल्यूशन की इतनी सारी बातें करते हैं वो बहुत ही छोटी चीज है आहार के सामने आहार की वजह से जितना नुकसान हो रहा है शरीर में उसका बहुत ही छोटा प्रतिशत पोल्यूशन की वजह से हो रहा है पोल्यूशन को तो बॉडी कभी भी संभाल लेगा है रॉन्ग फूड में से बाहर आना जरूरी there's some environments too, you get there. I was just in Breatharian Heaven when I was in Aswan, Egypt. I was looking around and says, Breatharian Heaven. <laughs> now, however you could be sustained anywhere, your body is resilient and tough enough to get rid of things it don't need. The human's problem is the over-toxification of things. We're doing too much. That's what we're saying. But it can handle a good load. There was a guy in America, for instance, I remember over 20-some years ago, he was drinking a lot, and I used to say in my mind, man, he's going to kill himself. Now, before I left America a couple years ago, I ran into him. He was still drinking. Now, I was scratching my head, how did his body handle that? He's still alive? <laughs> <laughs> but that shows you how resilient the body is. Now, if he can take himself through that, this little bit of pollution in the air, that's a little bit compared to the body. It'll handle that like it ain't nothing. <coughs> right. Yeah. Compared to what people are doing. That's how tough our bodies is. We got to give it more credit than what it's worth. Well. <laughs> it's keeping us alive right now. It's did this. It's already hooked up, keeping universal laws that don't lie. It's doing all of this. That's why we got to start loving ourselves again. Thank you. Yes. Right. <laughs> all right. Anything else? Any more? Food is not important. It, it takes energy. Why we give a born baby a milk? Because it has to, nature shows us processes. Just like an apple, an apple or a fruit, there's certain seasons on when it should be picked instead of too early and stuff like this. So we as humans, we come from a seed, for number one, and you're going through a process of nature just like anything else. Now, the old idea was that the baby comes out and feeds from the mother, Mother Nature. Du -du -du -du. Then it feeds from Mother Earth. Du -du -du -du. Then it learns to go off a of sky father. It feeds off the ethers. That was the old idea, but somewhere along the way we lost that. But a baby, like for instance, let's take a, a, an adult. Sometimes my son gets mad at this because he's 21. I say, yeah, your brain ain't fully developed until you're 25. I know that, but you ain't got to say it. But I... <laughs> So we are growing, yes, a baby, because people always try to throw that to me. <laughs> well, like a baby, so I said, don't starve that baby, feed that baby, and leave that baby alone. You don't created it. Take that baby through its processes till it gets its own responsibility, its own mind, and its body can handle enough energy on its own to go into that next phase. <coughs> so yes, we do eat off of external things until it gets to a certain age. I'm not going to challenge that, starving a baby. <laughs> right, absolutely. Now, I don't have a mind to. All he got is once. The exercise that we did, Qigong, is, is it meditation? Yes. It is. Did it's, you feel it? Right. No. See, there's many different forms of meditation. It's just like yoga. Yoga is called meditation and stillness. You're getting here, you're focusing on this area, but everywhere the mind goes, <laughs> the energy goes. The blood start going there, and the more you go in that area, the easier the flexibility start coming in after a while. That's meditation and stillness. When you go into a movement type, slow, like a Tai Chi, that's a meditation and movement. You're focusing on how you step in, proper body structure, 
so that the energy can flow to the earth upwards. But it's still a meditation because you've got awareness all over the body and wherever the mind goes, the energy flows. Because there are some people who don't like sitting down in one position. So a movement meditation fits them better. And there are some people who like, don't like movement. They don't. So that's what fits them. Fit the one that fits you as you're going on your uh, road. Now, one thing about I like introducing this meditation, there's many places I go to where a person had an idea what meditation was, never liked it. As soon as they see something this simple, I can do this. I like this now. Once you find something that catches your attention when you can grow off of, you'll stick with it. Does that make sense? And this one, you can grow into it. You'll enjoy it. And like I said, there's a thing in America they ask you at the doctor's office. How do you think your health was on the last checkup you did last year? That's a good question. And if you stick with these practices, you should walk in there next year. Of course I approve. The numbers should be different. Because you've been dedicated on cultivating these energies. That's why they call it spiritual cultivation. Cultivation is a word they deal with in agriculture. You are giving something some care so it can grow. Putting it in the right environment. Giving it the right water. Giving it the right amounts of sun. The right air. we got to start putting ourselves in the right position. And everything else is a given. To cultivate energetically. Does this make sense? That you're going to grow. That's what the tree of life is talking about. A self-sustaining organism. जैसे एक पौधे को बड़ा करते हैं हर प्रकार का जतन करके वैसे ही हमारे भीतर जो ऊर्जा है उसको भी हमें जमा करना है उसको बढ़ाना है हमेशा उसका व्यय करके उसको जाने नहीं देना है तो इट नीड्स टू बी कल्टीवेटेड ग्रेजुअली यू नो द रिजर्व आई शुड फिल अप विद टाइम एब्सोल्युटली एंड हाउ मेनी मिनट्स ऑफ दिस इज गोइंग ऑन या हाउ लॉन्ग शुड कीप ऑन आई से एट लीस्ट 20 मिनट्स एट लीस्ट इन अ होल डे या बिकॉज़ दैट गिव्स it takes about seven minutes for the blood to leave the heart, make its rotation around the body to get back to the heart in a healthy body. At least 20 minutes to give you three of those rotations. Oh, no, you should try to get at least a 20, 20 minutes of session. And every day is different. Some days you feel more energetic than others. Now, this is something good to do. We always talk about this energy, gaining energy. But how nature works, it works in patterns. There's some times of the year you might have more energy than other times of the year. That's normal. But do that make sense? Because some people think something's wrong with me. I was more energetic a couple months ago. What's wrong now? That could be your season of rest. So you might, your meditations have changed. They'll be different. It's not always going to stay like that because change always takes place. So that's why your spiritual journey gets good because... As you start monitoring yourself year after year, you know when the best season is for you to start creating things. Because you've been monitoring yourself. Yeah, usually at that time period, I have higher energy. That's when I'm going to start my business. Right. You're created with the matrix. You start knowing yourself, knowing where you fit in. <laughs> oh, man, this is good. Yeah, one last question. Yeah, one just to continue hers, when you said 20 minutes, uh, we did four positions. So would it be 555 an extra time to right. manage the energy or does, is it included in the 20 minutes? It, about 555 five, five will work starting out. Okay. It's included in the 20 minutes, you can play with it. So the playing depends on how much you want to do, but 555 five for each position? Yeah, okay. absolutely. Okay. And when I first started out, I remember I used to get a clock, have it in the front that I could look at it. Okay, that's five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> And then you know you don't need that no more. You're going off with a flow, you're going off the yeah. feel. Absolutely. Okay, my question is, one, what is the significance of the body clock? Is there any significance to this about because you said when, when the sun comes up? Oh absolutely. So that that's one. Two is this is a highly uh, evolved practice. So there will be a red herring to it in terms of people can, you know, overdo it or because when you go off food, water, whatever, it has an effect on the organs. So there would be some guiding points that people need to be careful of because they have different health conditions till they get to your point. Oh, absolutely. <coughs> Usually when I throw the retreats, I have food there now. 
The reason being is, I don't care what you say to a person, there's somebody going to come on medication with the doctor, because in their mind, if I stop eating, I'm going to get cured. They're desperate. So, of course, you don't want nothing. Else. So, people will come to me, if I'm on diabetes, should I do this? If you need to eat that, eat that, that, that. So keep the doctor's orders. You understand? But when we start going through these meditations, running the energy, they still have the benefits of uh, dealing with prana. So I always tell a person to work with their doctor. You understand? And then, because if you can beat the doctor, you sh that's a big thing. See, it's very powerful to heal yourself. And if you can heal yourself, you're ready to go on the pranic journey. You know, for real, for real, to really lay stuff down. But first, go through the healing process. So that's number one. It's, it's a powerful thing to know how to heal yourself. And the second most powerful thing is, even if you get sick, you know why you did. You know why you got sick. You ain't blaming nobody. You ate too much chocolate cake. You know, during that season, right? You know what you did. <laughs> Actually, your body is meant to heal itself. It's meant to heal itself. It's a given. It always seek balance within itself. They call that homeostasis. So even, see this is why you even got to look at aches and pains different. When you have an ache and pain somewhere in the body, the body put itself in that position to keep you alive, right. to try to maintain. It's doing a good job. We got to start giving it that credit. <laughs> Absolutely. Man. Man. <laughs> इसीलिए वो दर्द हुआ है तो वो कुछ गलत नहीं है वो हम हमको जागृत होना है उस दर्द को देख करके कि ये परपस से ये हो रहा है The body clock I'm glad you brought that up See our habits are so ingrained within the matrix because it's with this clock and it's dealing with we can say the solar clock lunar clock it don't matter the body's hooked up with it so when you're doing a habit throughout the your life it's automatically, your body knows what time is doing that as. Now in the Taoist tradition, you got 12 major organs. And every two hours, that's where the energy is at in those organs. Two hours, it might be in the heart at a certain time, from five to seven. From seven to nine, it might go to the liver. You can actually look up that information. Because in martial arts, there's a martial art called Demac. So, I hate to say this, but the practitioner, if he's fighting somebody at 5 o'clock and he knows the energy is in your heart at 5 o'clock, he's aiming to hit you in the heart, in the chest, so you can take that energy from him. He knows where the energy is. If y'all fighting at a certain time, you know it should be there. Vice versa, there's practitioners. If you're coming to be healed by them at a certain time, say if your kidneys is hurting, they'll probably tell you to come at the time where the energy is in the kidneys. So your body's hooked up to the matrix. Hand, the information is out there. You just got to be willing to look it up. Now, let's say, for instance, every day you wake up at 6 o'clock. You'll get to the point you don't even need an alarm clock. Your body will wake itself up at that, at that time. That's what it does. That's the body clock. But now you want to start waking up an hour early. In the beginning, it's going to be problems. So you might have to get the alarm clock, force yourself to retrain yourself. But over a period of time, your body will get used to being woken up at 5 o'clock. That's that body clock. So that's why when I tell people start fasting once a week, you are programming your body clock. That's basically what you're doing. But with energy, my personal experience is that if you start your day late, you're always lower on energy. If you miss the morning hours, if you wake up early by 11, you have everything done. You're like, you know, I have time at hand. But you start later. You just drag on because your energy is down. So there is, uh, even in medical science, if you're checking your adrenaline, there's a test which you have to perform exactly at 8 a.m. and then at 4 p.m. Right. Because the adrenaline goes up. So there is, what you're saying to the matrix, the body is tuned to that cycle when that hormone is also in uh, at its peak. So with the energy work that you've done and the food thing, how does this relate? Oh, now there is a thing called, I'm glad you brought this up. And that could be a controversy. <laughs> That's good at what you said, but it's also, because there is what you call a lunar person. 
There's people who like staying up at night. Will stay up all night. There ain't nothing you can do about it. Yeah, so here, when she's in Chandra. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so here, this part of the world actually, Tommy must be aware of it, but uh, the calendar, the Gregorian calendar, came in much later. We had something called the Hora calendar. Right. Which exactly works on that. You know, body clock tuned to the planets, tuned to the organs. Mm -hmm. So you functioned at a certain level at a certain time period. And that's how the ancients worked, and that's right. what we moved away from. Exactly. Because yeah, so. I just did a thing though with the New Year's resolution and I had to teach about the other New Year which is in spring and that's what you should be gearing up for because it makes it easier. I had to be user friendly and say this is guaranteed. I said try it out. Because usually people fail with the other, other resolution because dealing with an energy thing again. You know in the day of the winter and that's the beginning of the year and you're trying to make this new commitment. It's better to do it in the spring when everything is springing upwards. And there's even a thing on um, dealing with the uh, zodiac, for instance, Aries the head, springtime. And then when it gets down here, it's called spring because it's like it's springing upwards. Fall starts at the waist. You see it all on the body. So that knowledge is out there again. For some people, they just look at it and say, ah. But the more you start living this lifestyle, you start seeing it becoming real. Or when to set times for your life, where you're at your cycles, and it makes sense. So that's why, yeah, start. There's a, ooh. I guess the stuff is that. <laughs> yeah, there was another one. So I could go on and on. All right, good. This is wonderful. Uh, we are having a retreat, uh, I think this weekend. But I don't know if there are seats. But I think uh, since he's going to be here for uh, two months, we'll see how best we can have him over. Oh yeah, every day is a retreat. <laughs> so we have passed that register around in case yes, you've not we'll given your name, remember to give it so it'll keep you informed about it. Events while <laughs> events. And you can look him up on YouTube, Facebook. Oh yeah, I do gotta pass out my cards. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I got a YouTube channel where I do try to put some intent on there uh, that's dedicated for certain answers that people want to answer. Yes. Don't we hit the liquid drain? We don't hit what's therapy, what are drugs, all that stuff, dealing on the Brotherian level. So this has been good. Did and you I have a good time? Thanks for coming on. Just one, one, one last thing. Yeah, so just as an offering from our side, as we had mentioned in that, yeah. this is a voluntary contribution kind of seminar. So please feel free to be of use and uh, be generous we take uh, one for his work as well. Yeah, we could take a group. Oh, so these okay. envelopes are available here. Yeah. Where's your selfie stick? Yeah. Oh, this one itself? Oh, I'll use mine. We need to put this off, I guess. Yeah. Bye-bye. Have fun. Thank you. 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 Thank